If you actually have strong algebra skills, you ought to be able to solve this problem. Now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through the full solution in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. All right, now, if some of you are out there saying, I'm totally confused, well, uh, you will not be confused in a uh, minute or two. So let's go ahead and get right to the solution. And first of all, we need to discuss some basic properties about square roots. All right, so we have the square root of 40 plus the square root of 90. Now, of course, we could go into our calculators and get a decimal estimation, but that's not what we want to do here. Now, for those of you that are taking some sort of math class, maybe like algebra, you don't really work with your calculator in terms of um, finding uh, you know, decimal values of square roots. Now, I'm not saying you don't. That's actually, let me correct that. You do do that, but it's more typical for you to know how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, uh, you know, working with just square roots, i.e. you're going to be putting your calculator away because most of us can use a simple calculator to find the square root of a number. All right, so what's the first property that we need to know? Well, we need to understand that we can break up the square root of a number. Okay, let's take this simple example here, like the square root of 8. We can break up this um, square root problem into the factors of this number. Of course, now we're looking at 8. So we can think of 8 as the same thing as 4 times 2. Okay, so the square root of 4 times 2 is the same thing as this problem, the square root of 8. But here is the great thing about doing this. We have a property of square roots where basically what it tells us that we, are, uh, we have the square root of these two factors. We can write this right here by um, writing individual square roots over these factors. Okay, so the square root of 4 times 2, we can write as a square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Okay, this is a very, very powerful property. And uh, really, this is going to be the secret to doing this problem. Now, what's the uh, value of doing this? Well, uh, here we have the square root of 4 times 2, which, of course, is the square root of 8. But now we have the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. We can simplify this. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, the square root of 4 is 2. So uh, the square root of 8, really, we can write as 2 square root of 2. And we need to be able to fully simplify square roots. And in mathematics, this symbol right here is called radical, a radical. So square roots and radicals. So that some of the properties I'm going to be, um, be talking about also apply to radicals like cube roots, etc. All right. So this is the first thing you need to understand is that we can simplify square roots. And not only can we, we have to. Okay. So in other words, it's very much like, let's say you uh, were taking a math quiz and you uh, gave your final answer like this, one, uh, 100 over 200, your teacher will not like that much. They're going to be like, hey, fully simplify that down to one half. And if you don't, uh, most math teachers will take some points off. Okay, But when we're talking about square roots and radicals, you won't be able to do the problem unless you first simplify your square roots. And you'll see uh, this come into play in just one second. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next thing we need to know. And that is something called perfect square factors. So these are uh, perfect squares and perfect square uh, factors. And I'll talk about the perfect square factors part here in a second. But we want to be paying attention to these numbers, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, on and on and on. Because if we take the square root of these numbers, we get 2. Okay, the square root of uh, 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. So if we kind of look back in this problem right here, okay, we could see that 4 right here is a perfect square and it's a perfect square factor. It's a factor of eight and is a perfect square factor. Okay, so we want to try to take numbers and find perfect square factors. Okay, so numbers like this, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, et cetera. All right, so these are really the two kind of main things that we uh, need to understand to simplify square roots, but we still haven't talked about how to, uh, how to add square roots. And I'm going to now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. 
So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. All right, so here we have the square root of 40 plus the square root of 90. All right, now that we know about this uh, perfect square uh, factor business, we can uh, take a look at both of these square roots, square root of uh, 40 and the square root of 90, and think about, hey, can we simplify these? Well, let's think about perfect squares. And here, 40, we can write as 4 times 10. Now, you could also write 40 as 2 times 20, right? So and these are two factors of 40 as well, but there's no value in writing uh, the square root of 40 this way because 2 and 20, uh, both of those are not perfect squares. So if you can find a perfect square, that's what you want to do. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay, 4 times 10, 4 is a perfect square. So we're going to think of 40. The square root of 40 is a square root of 4 times 10. Now, likewise, we have the square root of 90, so we can think of that as the square root of 9 times 10 because 9 is a perfect square. Now, hopefully, this is kind of obvious. I made this question, you know, uh, pretty easy um, because this is kind of a basic level, an introductory level problem. But uh, let's go ahead and finish this up now. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is simplify these individual square roots. So we have the square root of 4 times 10. We can break this up as a square root of 4 times the square root of 10. And the square root of 4 is 2, so the square root of 40 is uh, 2 square root of 10. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the square root of 90, which, of course, is the square root, same as the square, uh, same thing as the square root of 9 times 10. I can break these up into two individual square roots and get this perfect square factor resolved, right? So I have the square root of 9, which, of course, is 3. All right, so now... Our problem is this, okay, instead of, the, uh, instead of the square root of 40 plus the square root of 90, we have 2 square root of 10 plus 3 square root of 10, and now this is going to be very easy. All right, so here is the rule in mathematics. You can add uh, or subtract two square roots or radicals if uh, these parts right here are exactly the same. Okay, in other words, we have a square root of 10 and the square root of 10 then we can add or subtract these two square roots. And basically, I want you to think of this as almost like an algebra problem. If I have 2x plus 3x, well, the answer here is 5x because these are like terms. We have an x here and an x here. It's uh, basically identical, okay? You think of this almost as a variable. In other words, are these like, like, like terms, like this situation right here? Then yes, indeed, we can add. And we're going to add this just as if we uh, were adding two variable terms. We're going to add these numbers like the coefficients. So let's go ahead and finish this problem up. Very easy. Once we had these two things simplified, we're like, oh, we can add these because these are both uh, uh, square roots of 10. Look, I have two square roots of 10s over here and three square root of 10s over here. Uh, together, we have five square root of 10s. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.